Hello everyone, I am Manali Reshramwala, Assistant Professor of LJ Institute of Physiotherapy. Today I am going to talk about General Mechanical Principles, which is a topic of Exercise Therapy 1 subject for first year physiotherapy students of Gujarat University. Here are some of the mechanical principles which are used or applied in physiotherapy, so we need to know them in a brief. First is Force. Force is that which alters the state of rest of the body or its uniform motion in a straight line. Any kind of pull or push is described as a force. Next is the composition of forces. Force is a vector quantity and it can be described as a arrow. And the direction of arrow represents the direction of force. The magnitude of force is represented by the length of the arrow. And the tail of the arrow suggests the point of application of the force. Force can be divided into single or the two forces applied in a, in a body. Single force. A single force applied to a body which is free to move. Then we can get the movement in the direction of force. And whatever amount of force being applied, that will be the magnitude. Two forces. If two forces are applied in the same direction at a common point with equal magnitude or whatever the magnitude is, then we will get the resultant force is sum of the magnitude of the individual forces. As shown in the figure, red arrow is of 5 Newton and blue arrow is of 10 Newton and both are being applied in one direction. The resultant force will be of the same direction and the magnitude will be the sum of those two that is 15 Newton. The, if the two equal forces are applied at a common point but in opposite direction then the state of equilibrium will occur. But if these two unequal forces applied at a common point in opposite direction are of different magnitudes, then the movement will occur towards the direction of greater force and the magnitude will be the difference between magnitudes of the two forces. Sometimes it is inconvenient to apply force in a particular direction. Like other conditions may suggest that two forces are being applied at an angle whatever the amount equal or unequal but if they are being applied at an angle the compound effect need to be understand we can understand it through a parallelogram of the force where we can see the two forces are being applied being applied at an angle on a point o like oa and ob are the two forces <coughs> and the resultant force is oc here we can see the magnitude is the higher than OA and OB and the direction has also changed through which we can say that these example in human body we can find in the muscle deltoid muscle. Yes, deltoid muscle, muscle at the shoulder joint producing abduction where the interior and posterior fibers of the deltoid creates a line of a direction of force along with the middle fibers of the deltoid and the highest magnitude can create a large degree of range of motion. It's a very powerful muscle. Another condition is if the two unequal forces acting at different points in opposite direction then it may produce a rotation and this kind of example can be seen in human body at the level of scapula. The muscles around scapula produces rotation by the help of these kind of thing. Next principle is tension. The tension by definition is a system of force tending to separate part of the body combined with equal and opposite forces which hold the parts together. It is again measured in Newtons because tension is a force. Force is also measured in Newton. But in physiology, force and tension are com usually used as a synonym. For example, intramuscular tension is a force of muscular contraction only. So 
the strength of the muscle is its ability to generate tension that's the definition of strength next is inertia the resistance of a body to any change in its state of rest or motion is known as inertia if the body is in rest wants to stay in rest only and it provides resistance to the force if we even if we give to it at up to certain limit to change its position so at a body at a rest tends to remain at rest while a moving body continues to move to a constant speed and in a straight line unless acted upon by a force reverse effect of force of body we can also say it that whatever the force we apply there will be some re reverse effect of the force of the body which will prevent the movement for initial sum of the time but if we increase the amount of force then there will be the movement these inertia like once the inertia of body is overcome the movement will initiate uh and after that it will be very much easy to continue the movement so an inertia is the resistance offered by the object and is directly proportional to the mass of the object the heavier the mass more the inertia here are some of the funny examples of inertia the heavier the object more the inertia next is friction friction is a force which oppose the motion when one surface slides on another surface so again friction is a force which is again measured in a newton it sometimes it may also prevent the movement at all if the force is not more than the friction then the movement will not occur one thing we need to remember that inertia is always at the initiation of motion or at the initiation of change of state of the body while friction is going to remain throughout the movement or throughout the motion whether we are applying whatever the amount of force the frictional resistance obtained during movement and is slightly less than so called limiting friction here are the examples of use of friction in physiotherapy the dynamic friction if we want to use it in a decrease way we can reduce it by using polished surfaces for example if we want to apply a massage therapy we are we are using talcum powder or oil or some other things to reduce the friction between skin of the patient and skin of the therapist but if we want to increase the friction that will be helpful for safety purpose for example we can make a non slip floors in the gymnasia slopes or stairs or we can use a rubber ferrules in the walking aids to prevent uh, fall next principle is speed speed is a rate at which body moves there is no any account of direction just whether the body is moving faster or slow the speed of res relaxed passive movement so here we are understanding what is the use of speed in physiotherapy the speed of relaxed passive movement should always be slow and rhythmic while the speed of active movements can be natural with natural speed or reduced speed or increased speed as natural speed most of our functional movements are of natural speed its patients own speed the reduced speed reduced speed is usually used in active movement of resisted exercises like during resisted exercise if we make the patient to do exercise with dumbbells or with any kind of weight with a reduced speed it will be more accurate movement the perform a patient can perform and we can also expect a full range of motion in reduced speed while increased speed there will be reduction in uh full range of motion like full range of motion we cannot get most of the dancing or aerobic kind of activity we can suspect with increased speed which will help us to improve our circulatory uh, condition instead of muscular strength next is velocity difference between speed and velocity is the direction yes it incorrect occurs not only the rate of motion but also the direction of motion that means speed is just how fast we are moving or traveling while the velocity is speed including in which direction you are moving right 
So here the difference between speed and velocity. The acceleration. Acceleration is rate of change of velocity. There can be positive acceleration which is increase in velocity and deceleration which is decrease in velocity. The next is momentum which is a quantity of motion a body possess. The force responsible for momentum will generate movement slowly in relatively heavy object more rapidly in lighter object. For example, we find difficulty throwing a game ball than the medicine ball. It is a it is represented by the product of mass of velocity. So here are repeating it. The momentum is quantity of motion a body possesses and is represented by the product of mass and velocity. So the heavier the object, momentum will be less and the lighter the object, momentum will be more. So whenever we throw a game ball, it is easier for us. It gives a highest momentum while a medicine ball is less. The use of momentum in physiotherapy is during pendulum exercise of the shoulder joint as well as in suspension therapy. Next is work. Work is a product of force and the distance through which force acts. Simple force into distance. Here we can say the 12 Newton force is being applied for 5 meter of distance. Then the, diff uh, the product of it is a work. Work is measured in joules. If we enter a time character in it, then it is known as power. The rate of doing work or rate of energy expenditure is known as power. And we can understand it with this equation that is power is equal to work upon time. If we include work divided by time, whatever the amount of time being uh, taken to fulfill that work is known as power and it is measured in joules per second. Next is energy. The capacity of a body for doing work is known as energy. The potential energy, capacity of doing work by virtue of position, whatever the position person or a body is being able to maintain, that maintenance of that posture is known as potential energy. And when the capacity of doing work is by its velocity, then it's known as kinetic energy. For example, a thing which is at a certain level being hold, then that thing possesses potential energy. As it is being fall free, allowed free to fall, the movement is occurring by its velocity is known as kinetic energy. So here are the references. Thank you.